Good afternoon and welcome to the Midday News. Here's what we have in the bulletin. Canadians warned to exercise caution in Jamaica due to high level of violent crime. Health Minister insists rehabilitation work at Cornwall Regional Hospital is on track despite labor issues. And later in sports, West Indies struggle after day two of second test against Australia. Thanks for joining us. I'm Shamela Pullen. Here are the details. Canadians are this afternoon being warned to exercise a high degree of caution in Jamaica due to the high level of violent crime. The advisor was issued despite the widespread states of public emergencies declared by Prime Minister Andrew Holness to curtail the surge in gang violence and murders. Prince Moore reports. According to the Government of Canada's Travel Advice and Advisories Notices, Travelers entering Jamaica should exercise a high degree of caution due to a high level of violent crime. It advised its citizens that a state of emergency was declared in several parishes until December 19. The advisory says during this period, security forces have increased rights to conduct searches and seizures and detain persons of interest. It warned citizens that if they are traveling in the affected areas, they may be subject to searches by members of the security forces. Meanwhile, the Canadian government said violent crime, including armed robbery and murder, is a problem in large cities and tourist areas, including parts of Kingston and Montego Bay, despite the presence of police to counter criminal activity. It informed citizens that the availability of firearms is widespread and most violent drug and gang-related crimes, especially murder, involve firearms. The advisory further states that there is a risk of becoming the victim of crossfire in these areas and that tourists are also at risk of crimes of opportunity, especially theft and robberies. Canada told citizens that Crime tends to be concentrated within what the police refer to as traditional hotspots or high-risk communities, but can take place anywhere at any time. And the private sector organization of Jamaica PSOJ is expressing disappointment with the delay in tabling the states of public emergency regulations. It says without the regulations, the members of the security forces are not empowered. The PSOJ says while it remains supportive of the security measure, the government must be proactive in getting everything in place in a timely manner, especially the legal requirements. It is therefore urging the government to act. With illegal guns being the main weapon fueling murders locally, Prime Minister Andrew Holness wants a war to be declared on illegal guns and wants the United States to help. Mr. Holness was speaking to law enforcement officials in Washington, D.C. this week. O'Shane Masters reports. Prime Minister Andrew Holness has asked the U.S. for a concerted effort to be made to stop the flow of illegal guns to the island. Mr. Honus, who was addressing a meeting of senior officials of the United States Justice Department on Thursday, said 90% of the illegal guns in Jamaica, including AR-15s, are trafficked from the United States. He says the same effort that is given to drugs being imported to the U.S. should be given to guns that are leaving. The war on drugs is two-way trade. Drugs come into the United States and guns come out. That's the reality. There is no war on guns. And the guns are used to protect the turf where the drugs land for transshipment and safe passage to the United States. The Prime Minister noted that Jamaica faces challenges in trying to deal with the weapons that criminals are using. Hence, the support from the U.S. is needed. The guns that we are discovering are less AK-47s and more AR-15s. Mm. So, we, you know, we are challenged. He's therefore requested that Jamaican traffickers and guns destined for Jamaica be given priority attention under a Bipartisan Safer Communities Act passed in Congress in June. But we would welcome your help and support in identifying, tracking, and prosecuting those persons and potentially extraditing them back to Jamaica, though we would want you to keep them. 
In the meantime, the government has provided security and justice officials with the names of Jamaican criminals residing in the country. Commissioner of Police Major General Anthony Anderson noted that closer cooperation will ensure that criminals do not feel they have a safe haven in the United States from which to sponsor crime in Jamaica. Our relations as, as international law enforcement and, and as, as countries is stronger than your relation as criminals. That's it. That's the message. The high level meeting of law enforcement and security agencies was held to discuss the growing threat of transnational criminal gangs, organized criminal violence, and the trafficking of illegal guns to Jamaica. O'Shane Masters, TVJ News. Health Minister Dr. Christopher Tufton says the Cornwall Regional Hospital in Montego Bay, St. James, is on track with the rehabilitation work. However, the project is lacking certain skilled labor, but he is optimistic they will complete the project on time. Rehabilitation work at the Cornwall Regional Hospital in St. James started over three years ago, and the project has seen several delays over the period. But Health Minister Dr. Christopher Tufton says he's satisfied with the level of work being done so far. The, the 2B phase is going very well. A lot of work is going on in terms of reinforcing the structure, in terms of putting in steel um, reinforcement, concrete reinforcement, the roof. Um, and that was what this phase was intended to do. We are finalizing discussions around the final phase, which is where you now go in and put in the partitions and the windows and the doors and all of that. And we are hoping that sometime next year that will start, hopefully sooner rather than later. But Dr. Tufton says there is a challenge. He says the project does not have all the manpower it needs for certain skilled areas. We had some issues with um, skilled labor. And in fact, we placed an ad in the, on the social media pages around you know, carpenters and masons because um, we need a local labor content outside of the Chinese workers who are given permission to come in. Um, it is a difficulty. Uh, the reality is that the work that is taking place nationally whether in, in construction of one form or another, um, there is a shortage of certain skilled labor. He says this will affect the time in which the project will be completed. However, Dr. Tufton remains optimistic that the project will be completed on time. He is hoping that if the full building is not occupied, at least parts of it will be occupied during the latter part of 2023. We have learned a lot of lessons, um, but guess what? We, those lessons are going to mean a lot to us because there's so much other build-out that is taking place now. Spanish Town, Maypen to come, St. Anne's Bay and others. That Cornwall has been a sort of case study in how to deal with a public health facility in the context of not doing this for 25 or 30 years. So I'm encouraged that Cornwall will be a great lesson for us. But it also will be an amazing institution when it's finished or infrastructure when it's completed. Meanwhile, Dr. Tufton says his ministry will continue its public education campaign on HIV awareness. Speaking in Montego Bay, St. James recently, Dr. Tufton says there are still some vulnerable groups that are of concern. Street people, for example, is a vulnerable group. Um, uh, the, one of the emerging trends is married men who have sex with men. That's also a group that is, is particularly vulnerable. Um, HIV is no longer a gay disease. Um, it is. It is. It cuts across mainstream and all stream. And uh, what we have to do is to provide the necessary public education to all concerned, and to ensure that where persons are in doubt, they protect themselves. The St. James Health Department is reporting a decline in the Aedes aegypti, Aedes aegypti mosquitoes in the parish. Acting Chief Health Inspector Shanika Lewis says over 13,800 premises were inspected and over 2,000 were found to be positive for mosquito breeding. Thus, the Aedes index is 16%. And it is down from about 6% compared to the month of October. 
However, she noted that there were challenges in carrying out fogging operations in the parish due to persistent rainfall last month. In the meantime, with the Christmas season approaching, Ms. Lewis says the health department will be ste stepping, stepping up its inspection on meat sellers in the parish. So we're just encouraging persons that with the Yule Child season, that persons will be attempting to, to distribute for sale uninspected meat. So we are going to be ensuring that we are doing our enforcement actions to ensure that these, these um, meat that would be deemed unfit for human consumption are not continued in the food trade. She was addressing the recent sitting of the St. James Municipal Corporation. And for a peak in the world of business, here's Scudian and Barrett. The Jamaica Social Stock Exchange is looking to raise $100 million to fund social investment programs for the Utah season. The funds will be raised via a telethon. Managing Director of the JSC, of which the JSSE is a subsidiary, Marlene Street Forest, says $36 million will go towards the remaining social intervention initiatives. These three projects we are looking for through the telethon, $36 million or north of that, right? So we are really looking for that because while we are funding that project, we are looking also for a pool that other um, projects can be funded. And this telethon is going to be um, between December 16 to the 18th. And coming up in the Business Review this Sunday, chivalry is not dead. How a small business is enhancing the dating experience for young couples. That's it for the Business Minute. I'm Cody Ann Barrett. It's now time for the top regional and international stories. Here is Oshin Masters. In the region, the General Secretary of the Antigua and Barbuda Workers' Union, David Messiah, is calling on Prime Minister Gaston Brown to hold sincere discussions with former employees of regional airline Liat. Messiah said that the union has been calling for meaningful dialogue on the matter. However, he says Prime Minister Brown has refused to have any dialogue on the matter and literally said, take a 50% or leave it. But the union, which represents a significant amount of the staff, insists their workers will not accept the 50%. They have said that they will settle for nothing less than 100%. Liat, which is owned by the governments of Antigua and Barbuda, Barbados, Dominica and St. Vincent and the Grenadines, owes millions of dollars to its former employees, including pilots who, through their unions, have been demanding the payments owed. Further afield, Russian President Vladimir Putin said on Friday that further exchanges between the United States and Russia are possible. His comments come after WNBA star Brittany Griner and Victor Bout were exchanged in a prisoner swap on Thursday. However, the prisoner swap did not include another American that the U.S. State Department has declared wrongfully detained, Paul Whelan. Whelan was arrested on alleged espionage charges in 2018 and sentenced to 16 years in prison in a trial that U.S. officials have called unfair. And those were the top regional and international stories. I'm Shane Masters. We head to a quick break. When we come back, we'll have your midday sports report with Jermaine Brown.